So I don't know about you, but this week has been very busy. Had a lot of things going on in my life, both personally and at work. But I can only imagine what Jesus was feeling at this point. On Sunday, we heard, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And then today, Crucify him! Crucify him! When I think of the emotions that he must be feeling as he's standing in front of all the people, he's standing in front of Pilate, his friends are gone. What is he feeling right now? He's feeling hurt. He's feeling suffering from the scourging he just went through. And he's standing with Pilate, and Pilate's questioning him. And the high priests are edging him on. What is he feeling? Betrayal. Today is a day that we reflect that Jesus experienced the absolute deaths of human misery. Listening to our passion, we can can understand that. In our responsorial psalm today, it said, For all my foes, I am an object of reproach, a laughingstock to my neighbors, a dread to my friends. I am like a dish that is broken. Haven't we all felt like that at one point in our lives, that we were broken? Were we betrayed by someone? Were we hurt? Jesus felt all this. But Jesus saved us by coming down to our level stepping into the middle of our pain and sorrow from Isaiah. It was our infirmities that he bore, our suffering he endured. He didn't do this by eliminating suffering, but by suffering with us and for us, by teaching us by his example to trust and love God, even in the midst of the suffering. It means that in Christ, we can go right into God's presence just the way we are with all our miseries, with all our confusion and our wounds. In St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, understand this. He said, so let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. Jesus came to earth precisely for that reason, to meet us right where we were, right where we are, in the grime of our struggles, our wounds, and our sins, and to lift us up from there into his kingdom. Good Friday reminds us that Jesus knows our misery because he shared it. And so we can confidently approach the throne of grace just as we are. So we can receive mercy and find grace for timely help. On this day, that sacred Good Friday, we need to lift up our eyes to his saving cross. This morning at the cemetery, we watched the the stations that were reenacted by our youth. It was so beautiful. It was so moving. I was mentioning to Father Mo, at one point I looked over at Jesus and he was trembling. 
And as the stations progressed, he was trembling more and more. And Father Mo said he was in an Ignatius vortex. He was living out the passion. Now, I don't know if it was, he was just cold, was he nervous, but he was living it out. It was such a beautiful portrayal. But I also remember a few years ago walking the Via Della Rosa myself, the way of the cross, when I made pilgrimage to the Holy Land. The day that we did the stations, we were in complete darkness. It was very early in the morning. We prayed illuminated by the light of the moon in a sporadic street lamp. And through the cobblestone streets that normally would be crowded with shop owners and tourists, they were empty at this early hour. And we prayed the stations in the very street that Jesus was so cruelly forced to his death. And then we arrived at the church of the Holy Sepulcher. And we went into the chapel that is Calvary. I remember laying prostrate like we did tonight on the floor at the very altar of the crucifixion. And reaching under that altar, I was able to touch Calvary. I was able to touch the very stones that held the cross of Christ. It's so overwhelming when you realize where you are in what place you are. I was at Golgotha. I was at Mount Calvary. The very place that Jesus Christ laid down his life for my sins, my sins, your sins. He was there at that place. And I was touching it. That day five years ago when I visited the most holy of holies and I laid down where he was sacrificed everything for me. But isn't that where we are right now? If we're in that Ignatius vortex, we are there tonight. In a few moments, we're going to come up and venerate the very cross that Jesus hung from. We are going to venerate this crucifix, Jesus nailed to the cross, where we could see the wounds on his hands, the wounds on his feet. We could see the wound on the shoulder from carrying that cross. That cross that our sins were nailed to. He came among us and he bore our infirmities because he wanted to be close to us. He wants us to walk by his side, sharing our crosses and winning our friendship. Today, although we are saddened by the pain of our Lord had to experience in order to save us from our sins, he's given us everything for that. We are not alone in our suffering. We're not alone in our pain. During the Fridays of, of Lent, we prayed the Stations of the Cross here in our church, and we used the devotion composed by St. Alphonse Liguori from the 18th century, it's a beautiful, beautiful version. If you haven't used it, I, I encourage you to look for it. And on the 11th station, where Jesus is nailed to the cross, it says, consider Jesus thrown down upon the cross 
And he stretched out his arms and offered to his eternal Father the sacrifice, his life, for our salvation. He stretched out. They didn't force him to do that. He stretched out his arms. And his hands were nailed to the cross. That's his love for us. He did it for us. His love was so great that he did this for us. The guards didn't force it. He did it. And the station continues. They nailed his hands and feet, but it was our feet, sins that held him to the cross. My despised Jesus, nail my heart to the cross that it may always remain there to love you and never leave you again. I love you more than myself. I'm sorry for ever having offended you. Never permit me to offend you again. Grant that I may love you always. Then do with me as you will. My brothers and sisters, God's arms are always stretched out wide to welcome us. God's throne is always just a simple prayer away. He just wants us to ask for help, for his love. Most importantly, his mercy. Tonight as you approach, we encourage you to approach the cross as families, as groups. If you're here with your friends, come up with your friends. Come up with your families. Venerate the cross. Do it together. Because we are a community. We are a community. And we're showing our love for him tonight. Lord, never permit me to offend you again. Grant that I may love you always. And then do with me as you will. Regina Jenny, letare, alleluia, qui aque menum isti portare, alleluia, resurrexit sicut dixit, alleluia.